All right, so picked up this charge controller on Amazon for about $85 and uh, checked out some of the reviews and the specs and seemed to do pretty well. So I figured, why not? Let's give it a shot. It's compatible with basically all of your standard batteries, your sealed, your gel, and your flooded batteries and uh, works with both a 12 volt and 24 volt system. So uh, and it's capable of 390 watts on a 12 volt, which will be more than enough for the trailer that I'll be using. Um, because for the most part, I only do two to three nights off grid or dry camping. So anyway, uh, first thoughts after unpacking this thing is that uh, the quality seems to be pretty good, except for the screws that are throughout. Those are too small and pretty much worthless to do anything with. But, uh, you know, I was doing some uh, research on charge controllers and, you know, there's a variety of them out there. And uh, the thing I found the most was is that some of them will say it's a maximum PowerPoint tracking charge controller, but it's not. It'll actually be the older style, less efficient pulse width modulation ones, uh, PWM. So that's something you really got to pay attention to when you're buying these. But for the most part, overall, the quality seems to be pretty good. Got a couple of USBs on the on the bottom there that are uh, both 5 volt and 2 amp. And uh, just checking the initial quality of the uh, of the terminals there. Um, they seem to be pretty good as well. If you ever dealt with any kind of car audio back in the day, um, you'll find that some of the cheaper amps, the, the terminals are not great. And they can actually crack when you're tightening them down. So... Overall, though, it seems to be pretty good quality and uh, comes with a little antenna right there that's actually to check the temperature. And uh, so let's get started. Okay, so here I'm basically going to be running my wires inside the box, which will drill another hole. And I got to run them underneath in front of the fiberglass cap that's on my trailer. And as you can see down here, we'll take a little look. There is not a lot of room to work with. That's why trying to run stuff underneath these trailers or from inside is not a fun job. So most of these travel trailers that are sealed underneath, you have to basically run everything external or from the front. Um, because I wanted to do a lot of my equipment inside, but there's just nowhere to put it to make it very easy. So I figured this is going to be the best spot. Make it simple um because i don't like things that are fussy and hard when i can make my life a lot easier so that's where it's going to go in that corner right there i've already pre-measured my screw holes and everything so boom there they are uh so i added some spacers on the back and the instructions that said to space it out from the wall half inch quarter inch anything you could do so after doing that i slid on the controller and now it's time to run the wires so you can see the little black box we're going to yard that guy off. And as you can see, there's already a hole right there for my wires to go into. So now I just got to feed them down uh, in front of the fiberglass cap there. And what I picked up was from Home Depot is some 10 gauge uh, braided wire, which is copper, uh, because I'm also going to use that for my solar panels when I do an extension on it. So I figured I might as well grab it all there along with some uh, of the plastic wire looming um, just to kind of give it that clean look. And uh, also to protect the wires from, you know, vibrating and bouncing around because it is going to be rubbing up against metal and stuff. So until it gets inside that cap, I want to make sure it's protected. That way it doesn't wear out the uh, insulation sheath. So here I'm going to be drilling into my battery box, which this is another DIY project that I did. Uh, and I can leave a link for that into the description. So uh, basically just running another hole to run my wires into with a grommet. You'll see here in just a second that uh, after I drill this hole, get the little rubber grommet in there. All right, get those wires in there and twist that rubber grommet into place. It does take a little bit of manipulating sometimes to get those rubber grommets in and basically you can see there that uh, wire lumen is on it. Take some tape to kind of clean it up onto the other wires. And uh, basically, that's kind of it for the outside. So we'll finish hooking that up in a little bit. And we'll move back to the inside. So now we'll take some more wire lumen here. Get a length onto our cables real quick. Find a good place to cut those. Always a good idea to leave yourself some extra slack six eight inches maybe even a little bit more that way if you have to pull that thing off you have some room to work with it 
Um, because you never know when sometimes you might have to make a repair or if you're going to readjust some stuff, having more slack, even if it's hiding inside of the front fiberglass cap, is better than being too short. So if you have the room, might as well use it. All right, just continue running the uh, wire lumen up. And find a good place to cut that. And then after cutting that, just kind of finish feeding the wire inside. Then we'll get some electrical tape to kind of seal that. That way it can't come out of place. And then uh, we'll take uh, some wire strippers. And we'll strip the ends, giving ourselves about a centimeter on each, maybe, well, more about a half a centimeter on each side after we tape this up. And then we'll feed them into the correct slot into our controller, which you got to make sure that when you're when you're putting those in, you want to put them into the, uh, the battery side. On the far left, positive and a negative, those are going to be where the solar panels are going to plug into, which I'll have another video for that. Oh, in a couple weeks here, when I receive my panels and... I'll do another DIY on how I kind of ran this and the setup that I have anyway, just to give some examples of other solar system setups that are out there. All right, so those are the two I'm going to be hooking up into. Try not to get in the way too much here, but obviously you got to be able to see to work. So we'll loosen those guys up. And we will feed those in. One thing with these charge controllers or just other things in general that have these screw down terminals is that you don't want to just crank these things super tight. You can break them. Snug is really all you need. And we'll feed that negative guy in there and it's pretty much it for the wire hookup. It's mainly a lot of cleanup now. Um, I haven't hooked up the battery yet, but you'll see here in a second after I hook this up, I had to do some tidying up and cleaning things up and not to mention uh, probably go through my trailer on the front here and kind of take everything out and reorganize because the last couple trips was just kind of a uh, let's get home and throw everything inside which I'm sure everybody's been there when you're uh, kind of all ready to go and everybody's done you kind of throw it all in and I'll just deal with that when I get home so that's about where I was anyway got to throw in this cap real quick and then we'll tidy up our uh, wire lumens with a couple of the zip ties that have holes in it and uh, kind of run that off to the side. Now, one thing I found here is that when I put that box up there, I was thinking of running it down the side or straight down, but then I decided to run it down the side. So what I had to do is make a little notch out of here. So I just took my pair of side cutters, kind of made a little notch. That way that wire loom can come out of the side and basically just tied it back up in there. And you'll see the finished product here in a minute. Come and manipulate that box into place and do a double check to make sure it's pretty good. And we'll screw that guy into place and kind of start wrapping up this install. Okay, the cap is on. And basically, I'm just kind of running the wire down the side there to kind of see where I want it. All right, as you can see, I'm just doing a quick test. Got to make sure it works. Because this install is pretty much finished, at least for this part. Um, appears to be showing my volts. And uh, basically, I'll read the instructions a couple more times just to make sure... I fully understand the way that this one works, but it's pretty simplistic. Not a whole lot to it. Anyway, uh, that's that's pretty much it. Not a bad install. You know, feeding the wires was the hardest part. And uh, so here's the finished product right here. And hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
And also don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more videos.